Yeah, thank you. Um, I'll give you a countdown real quick and we'll get moving. Uh, we might be moving on to the next round on time. Okay, uh, starting in three, two, one, go. So yeah, this is uh, Final Fantasy II. We weren't originally intending to run this, but you know, then a Game Boy player decided to crash and we might as well do this now. Uh, so due to that, I am a little rusty and I hope I won't make too many major mistakes, but then again, it's FF2, so it's all RNG anyway. So yeah, basically what we what you saw there is we just got attacked by, uh, by four Dark Knights and, uh, well, <laughs> well, uh, that, that fight ended quickly. We tried to run, but we really couldn't, so that's, that's going to be painful. But luckily, some, uh, some of these soldiers, they found us, and uh, they decided to bring us to Min Wu, who is going to try to heal us up. So it turns out, you know, we're probably going to be fine. It's, it's all good. It's nothing to worry about over here. As soon as we w step out of the room, we meet our uh, our brother and sister, Guy and Maria, or in this case, crashed, and so. <laughs> so yeah, uh, our 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 fourth our fourth sibling, he's missing, unfortunately. So not really sure what's up with that. We we'll look into that, I guess. Uh, Add something with the wiring here so that I can actually look at my notes at times because I'm gonna be able I'm gonna need to read some of these notes or I'm gonna be screwed so yeah it's been quite a few months since I last ran the game I, I ran the game a couple of BSGs ago but uh, it's uh, it's been a good while with... okay let's uh, let's set some uh, let's set menuing to actually go fast shall we uh, I'm gonna remove that, like that, like that, formation to front. So, for the first part of the game, we'll first just go for, uh, for bare-handed fighting. So we're not actually gonna need all of any of this equipment, we're just gonna sell it off, get the money. That money is way more valuable for us. I'm gonna get, uh, two, two bucklers right here. Let's, uh, let's equip everybody with a shield, shall we? The reason I need shields on everybody is that the shield uh, level actually corresponds with the agility, so to speak, in the sense that if our shields are good and we have a high shield level, our chances of running will be very, very high. So high even that we're practically guaranteed to run from most encounters that are actually runnable. But there is quite a few things that aren't runnable, so that's something we'll have to look into. That should be fine. Our first character should be hitting level 2 right here already. There we go. See, two characters already on level 2. Over the course of the run, we're going to try to hit level 7 with all three of these characters, and that's pretty much going to make the, the first half of the game real easy for us. That puts everybody to level two. Let's go. So for the first part of the run, uh, so we kind of asked the the princess if we could join the rebellion. I mean, the, those warriors that we fought at the start, they kind of, you know, they killed our families. Uh, they burned our home. We don't really have any place to go. But the princess was like, well, uh, we'd it'd be way too dangerous. Leave it up for the soldiers, will you? But she did tell us something about the war, and it turned out that uh, the brother, or her, not so much her loved one, but the brother of the Kajuan prince, who is in the city as we speak, he actually went missing during the battle, so, you know, we figured we might as well go look for him then. So armed with our, our small bucklers and our fists, we're gonna walk in the middle of an enemy camp and try to save some 
friends that might not even live anymore. Seems like a plan, right? One thing I should note, all of these encounters may look random, but they're actually not. Uh, the encounters in FF2 are completely on a step base, so you could theoretically step manipulate the entire game. Uh, the record runs do actually manipulate, but considering how rusty I am, I am not even going to try. Uh, it doesn't save a lot of time, it's mostly that you know where encounters are going to end up being so that you can save the tile in front instead of 10 tiles away. That's the general idea there. So we tell this guy that we're with the Wild Rose, and uh, he's gonna leave us into, or he's gonna allow us to get into this secret hallway. Should be interesting. Oh, that's potions. Potions! Let's go. Heal items. And it turns out that the guy we find in the bed here is indeed the brother of the Casuan Prince. This is the Crown Prince of Casuan Keep. So he tells us that Borgen betrayed him, and uh, he's actually with the Empire. He knows nothing of our brother, though, but... As a dying man, he, uh, he asks us to give the ring to Hilda. First, he asks us to tell, him, to tell her that he loved her, but then he takes those words back. In that, you know, what good would it be to hear the words of love from a man who just died? It would just bring more sorrow in an already sad time. But, you know, it's completely fair. So, you know, we're just gonna try to deliver the ring, and uh, we'll move on, shall we? Now, considering I took quite a bit of damage just now with Furion, uh, I guess I might as well heal him up real quick. At this point, I could try to run away from these encounters, but it's not worth it for me to do just that. Uh, if we try to run at this point, uh, the chances of actually succeeding are very low, and especially with just one enemy, it just end up being faster to kill it. Uh, if we get enemies with a, you know, a fairly sized amount of, uh, of, of, or a party with a fairly sized amount of enemies in it, it could actually still be useful, because some of them could gain some advantage in gaining, you know, some experience to get to level 3. Basically, I need to hit a certain amount of hits in one fight, and that is going to help me to level up. Money does actually help, by the way. Uh, ideally, we'd get some bigger packs here, not only for the experience, but also just for the money. Uh, the more money we get now, the more we have to spend later on uh, fire tones and the like. So we're almost back at the starting uh, town. We're gonna tell Hilda that uh, we found the prince. But uh, he's no longer with us. We were too late. But, you know, hopefully with that, though, we will at least have proven our, our worth. Hopefully with that, we're allowed to fight in the war as well. So I've got one character that already leveled up. That's nice. Cool. Heating. Okay. So yeah, we show her the ring, and it actually tells her, like, okay, um, he's no. We, we tell her that, you know, he's no longer with us, we were too late, but we did manage to find him. We learn about the Mithril, and uh, she's gonna allow us to take Minwu with us, which is kind of nice, because this gets us a high-level white mage in our party really early on in the game, which is actually kind of beneficial here. So this is the first major thing that I can forget. I actually need to talk to Hilda again, because there is a couple key words that I need to learn here. First being the Dreadnought, the second being the Airship. Okay, got that out of the way. Let's get moving. Uh, so I'm gonna remove the staff, and first off I need him to hit level 2. And once he's hit level 2, we're gonna grind out some levels. And yes, yes, I know, grinding is boring, but... We kind of need to do that still. 
Trust me though, there is a, there will only really be one grinding section in the entire first or in the entire game pretty much. So there will be very little grinding afterwards. Taking the ship here because that's obviously faster than walking. Uh, actually, I need to talk to you. To Senate Falls. I'm trying to recall everything here. This is going to be interesting, I'll say that much. So, yeah, the basic idea is. Uh, the princess send us out in a quest to look for Mithril because you know if we're actually dealing with as strong as enemy, as strong an enemy as we think we are, we're gonna need weapons, and what better way to get weapons than to go right to the source? Okay, that's one hit. I need a second enemy for Minwu so that I can get the level that I wanted. Uh, you defend, you defend, you attack. Probably... Okay, that, that works. So that gets Minwu to level 2, which means the grinding can begin. Uh, speaking of which, Maria is already a level higher, which makes this a little bit easier, because I only need to grind up two characters now. Can you get those 400 gil just to make money management a bit easier? Uh... So yeah, for this exact reason, basically. So I need both uh, Furion and Guy to do two attacks this turn. Uh, I'll defend him. That should work. So Maria is statistically the fastest character of the four, so I want her to start and then have me take over and then have the others take over if need be. Ooh, this should be an interesting fight to say the least. Uh, all of those goblin guards, as well as the soldier, have a bow they can use. And that can do a lot of damage. That I So this could be a really big issue if I'm not careful. Luckily, we have a full party. Uh, we have two people on attacking for now, because both Maria and... Uh, or both... Maria, yeah, Maria already had hit level 3. So, we're fine for now. Fine, we have more than enough magic left. And that'll finish up this fight. That, could, that should get everybody to level 3. Now, through the remainder of this cave, I'm gonna... Uh, I'm gonna try to... To hit level 7. That, that's, our, that's our aim. Once we hit level 7, we're basically done with all the grinding I need for the entire run. Uh, I think this is the right way. Yeah, that's a high potion. That's good. Uh... This will be four, so that should be fine. You make a fair point, Kinnan. You make a fair point. Okay, that enemy escaping is actually not a good thing here. Uh, it could, it should be fine, unless the regular goblin also decides, the other remaining regular goblin also decides to escape. Uh, you fight on the goblin, and then we should be fine. Okay, ideally I want to have a small encounter on the next one. Uh, preferably something with like two or three enemies at most. Potion, cool. So 
See, that's perfect game. That's what I was hoping for. We'll kill the Goblin Guard on the next turn, so we're purposely missing attacks, and even though it seems like that does absolutely nothing, it is actually helping me increase my level. Because FF2. So yeah, that's, uh, that's level 4 right there. So we're getting there. Uh, single encounters are still very much the best thing that I can possibly see here, so happy to see this encounter right now. We'll go for four uh, and go for seven on the next one. So that's two. Three. That's four. So we'll attack again with Minwu on the next turn, and that should finish up this fight. And we should be able to hit level 5 on the next... Uh, that's one too many. You know what? I'll go for 7. That works. 5... 6... That doesn't lose any time then, unless I get a really, really big pack on the next encounter. So, if RNG is with us, we'll be fine. That gets the seven out of the way. Just need one small pack still. Okay, that gets those guys out. Now we do still need to get the mithril, so it's time to head down a bit further, I guess. I'm gonna make a quick detour here to get a fire turn. Okay, this is a really good encounter, actually. That's perfect. One. So we need to go for a four turn here, basically. Two. That's four. That should get us level five, both shield and barehanded. And with that, we only have two more levels to go until we're at the level that I need. I need approximately five more battles after this one until we're completely done with grinding for the entire remainder of the game. Wait, did somebody level early? Ah, oh, okay, Maria is apparently ahead. That's fine. Uh, that works. Uh, yeah, we'll attack on that one. So I'll go for a five turn here. That's one, two, Five. Okay, one more time until we're going to get level six out of the way. So this next fight that we're going to be doing is going to be the longest fight in the entire speedrun. Uh, it's going to take 14 turns total. This is not the kind of encounter I would have liked this to be on, but we can probably make this work if they're not going to be too dumb on all the bow attacks here.
we're fine. Three. Four. Yeah, I think we'll I think we'll be fine. Ooh, that was a big hit though. I'm gonna have to heal this turn. Five. It's not ideal to have to heal in battle, but I'm not gonna risk anything here. And that was a good call, because that would have killed. Six. Seven. After this, and then we're done with this fight. So yeah, as I said, slowest fight in the game, or longest fight in the game, not. unless the final boss decides to screw me over like he did last BSG. But let's not talk about that. That should get me level six, level six. So which means which just means one more level up. Here we go. Uh, we are running from this, for very good reasons. Those things only die on a critical. Uh, otherwise they take zero damage. So I'm gonna remove all the bucklers here real quick. Put them all to front row, and let's see what all those barehanded fights has done so far, shall we? Think we can handle this boss? This is the first boss of the game, the sergeant. He protects the Mithril. That was the first boss of the game. So yeah, you can see here what the grinding does. We got a Mithril Helm, not that it'll actually do much, but it actually, no, it'll help with some money management, so it's kind of convenient. Yeah, we get the Mithril out of the way. We're gonna teleport out of the dungeon, but not until we've formation changed. And put all those bucklers back on, because we still have to grind out one more level. Uh, so yeah, teleport outputs Minwu in dangerously low health, but you know, we have cure for that. And with that, we're gonna we're gonna slowly make our way back to the starting town with the Mithril this time. Because, you know, now we can actually get Mithril weapons. Not that we'll ever actually use it, but, you know, we could. Uh, actually, no, I'm, I'm running from this, because this encounter has a lot of enemies that are likely to run at random. And that's not something we want to have. This can work, actually. Uh, if nothing runs, this will work out perfectly. Because I'll get exactly the amount of turns I need. Now I need to defend with Minwu for one turn. Which is completely fine, to be honest. Apparently that goblin got scared of all my fake punches. Three. Okay, Minwu needs to defend two turns. Got it. See, that's why I didn't want to fight those goblins earlier. It's 
one. And that's two. That'll get us a total of six attacks, which means yet another grind fight done, which means two more fights to go, which are each about this length. So, so far so good. Of course he's going to pull up a bow, but luckily it got off Minwoo, so it's, it's like the best possible target. Soldier, that is a perfect fight actually. Because it just means defend for six turns. So it's one, two, three. Done. One more grind fight, guys, and then we're, fi we're finally done with the most boring part. I'm gonna have to do a heal on Minwu real quick, though. I have enough MP, so it should be fine. Let's see what our final grind fight is going to look like. That is a fine grind fight, if I do say so myself. So we need to do this for eight turns, and then we're done grinding. So that's one. Two. So soon enough you'll see why we actually have to do all of this. Because this looks very pointless, just hitting air for no reason for 20 minutes, but it'll help us a lot in the next couple of dungeons for five And that should be the last one. Which means, as soon as we kill this, we're uh, completely done grinding for the entire remainder of the game. So, yay! No more grinding for the next uh, three hours or so. So yeah, with all of that out of the way, let's get moving. Now, the next tricky bit comes in me not actually forgetting any of the keywords. Uh, you, you'll see soon enough that there are a lot of keywords coming up, and if I forget any one of them, uh, it will be bad, and that will be a problem. So let's hope I won't actually forget any. Uh, so I'm setting him up to fly me to Bafsk, because that's where we'll be going later. Because, you know, now that now that I have that set, I at least have the money paid for it, and I can spend everything that I have left uh, on the other stuff. We are kind of on the low end on money, but we should have enough to make do, especially since we got the Mithril Helm drop. up real quick, because Minwoo is going to leave our party soon enough. Ah, uh, this is the sword shop. There we go. Took the scenic route, but that'll do. Ah, uh, where is it? There we go. 
So this guy, he's gonna get some uh, some mithril stuff fixed up. And, uh, well, I mean, it's nice and all, but I think instead of going for that, I'll get some mithril shields. That sounds like good stuff. So I'm gonna buy, be I'm gonna buy two of them here. And I'm gonna add those to some of the bucklers that I have. Make running very, very easy on me. I think I don't need to go for other... Yeah, I think we're good. I was just checking my notes to see that I have not actually forgotten any keywords, because it's way too easy to do just that. But not until we've actually seen the Dreadnought, so we'll be fine. Yeah, it's happened on plenty of runs that in this area I've forgotten to learn the word Dreadnought and thus could not pass here. Uh, which will pretty much just instantly kill your run. So the idea is I set by... Uh, what happens here is that Morgan, who's kind of a lazy guard, he, uh, he took over control of the city. And in the process, you know, we were able to slip in. The Empire, they've been building a massive warship and they intend to attack several cities in the neighborhood very soon. We're gonna we're gonna get to that airship and try to prevent that from happening. So this is one of those examples where you can definitely see that shield level putting in work. Even though I still only have two mithril shields and I'm, my equipment for this is actually not very optimal, I'm still running pretty quickly on of, of most fights. At the end of the dungeon, we're going to meet up with the Dark Knight. Currently some high-ranked uh, general in the Empire's army. So yeah, getting a little cutscene there. Again, uh, much like in FF1, these cutscenes are only skippable in the PSP version. So, you know, we're just uh, going to skip that for now, get rid of it, and move on. I want to get this, the pass. See, these are not the kind of encounters that I would have liked to fight, so at least now we can skip them. And we can just move on to the... back to the starting town again, because now that we have some information, we might as well... I think we need to first buy a trip to Salaman, if I'm not mistaken. Because there is, there is another one of those keywords that I need to learn in just a minute, uh, uh, without which I cannot progress the game. Final Fantasy II was notorious for both its leveling system being really awkward, uh, because instead of leveling normally, you actually only level the stats that you directly use. So if I don't use magic, I won't gain MP, for example. And, you know, since we'll not actually be using magic, I will actually not ever get any uh, IP. Uh, buy a ship to Salamand. So yeah, having learned Sunfire there, that's the other part this game was notorious for. It. Having the, that word system, you'd very easily be able to forget one, and you'd have to completely backtrack. Although it is kind of cool how it's like, oh, you actually need a certain amount of information before you can gather new information. It suits the D&D &D principle behind Final Fantasy really well, I feel like. So yeah, all these cities, they've all been destroyed. There's not much we can do, to be honest. Uh, but what we can do is we're going to go to the king and we're going to tell him what happened. 
Uh, we're gonna ask him... Wait, we don't ask him about that? Uh, the dre... No. Oh, right, we... Never mind, we talked to... Uh, I'm talking to the wrong person. So we first have to ask... Have to talk to Hilda. And then Minwu will get the news that the king's conditions is ac is actually getting worse, and then I can talk to the king. A minor mess up, but it shouldn't be too big a deal. Wait, did I just learn the word? I wasn't sure there for a second, and forgetting that word loses about four minutes, if not more. Not to mention a whole lot of money. This is rather low on times, but I can make do with this. I'll take a safety strat later on by going back there to get a couple more of those tomes, just for the... just for marathon safety. So yeah, now that we have the fire tomes, it's on to the next town, because apparently the king told us, uh, you know, with the prince missing, you, prob you can't get the sunfire that we would need to destroy the castle, but... If you get the, if you manage to get the goddess bell, then you should be able to get in there no problem. Now it just so happens that Joseph knows exactly where the goddess bell is, so let's ask him. So he tells us, ah, uh, it's fine. I know where it is. Uh, but uh, we're gonna need to get to, to the snowcraft first, but I know where that is. It's it's gonna be fine. Now, once we get the snowcraft and we actually hit the snow, uh, we're gonna do the biggest uh, mechanics abuse in the game, basically to get us as much money as I would ever need in the entire remainder of the speedrun. Yeah, that's what we needed for. And I have to have some of the people of tech uh, assist me on that one. Because uh, I actually need some photos for that. It's gonna be, it's a, it, trust me, if you've never seen Final Fantasy II speedruns, you'll, you'll laugh. This is, this is amazing. I think anybody that's ever seen the run of this can vouch for that. See, rule agrees. And if rule agrees, yeah, that seems like a fair, a very safe bet right there. Yeah, you might as well just consider it a fact at that point. Don't care. As long as I have it. Don't really care which screen you make the photo of, as long as I have it. Like, and clear enough that I can actually see what's going on. Basically, I need three photos. You'll see soon enough of what. Actually, if you already know, then it's fine, but... Okay, in that case, you'll be fine. So yeah, with the, with the Snowcraft at hand, we're gonna do some, uh, some interesting mechanics abuses here. Now, I'm not too... Now, some of you may know, in the FF1 run earlier, if you were there, uh, back then, we mentioned that there was some kind of mini game we could play. Now, in FF1, that wasn't too useful because it was only a 1 in 6 we could get. Here it's a memory game, actually, and I'm gonna see how good I am at memory. That wasn't him? That was him. Oh, literally opened the thing just there. one. Just 
get closer if you need to. Okay, just let me know when you have it. Okay, I, I need to move on. It is a speedrun after all. So, just let me know if you have something that seems clear enough. I think I saw, yeah, there, I knew I saw that. Uh, that's that one. That's Gordon, that's Lila, that's Maria. Okay, Maria, Lila. Okay. Got it? After this, I'm gonna have to, to have to get you to the first picture of those. There it is. That's the one I needed. Where the hell is he? Okay, there we go. I'm so bad at these games, by the way. As you can clearly see, I'm not particularly good at these kind of mini games. Got it? A bit awkward doing this at a marathon, to be honest. Okay, next picture. And then back to the first one after that. Um, okay, back to the first. 17. Actually, that should do. Taking this really slow, honestly, more s like slower than I should, but okay, next. But you know, if that causes me to actually get this properly, I will take it. Um. Yeah, basically what I did there, because, uh, you know, that may have looked very interesting if that was the first time you saw that. Basically what we do there is we solve the first three of the memory puzzles, and then we know three of the solutions. And basically how that memory thing works is that the solutions of the puzzles are in a 32 puzzle loop. So I can loop back to the first puzzle, basically allowing me to do it completely without mistakes, and as fast as I ever wanted it to be. By beating my fastest time and doing it completely without mistakes, every single time I get 40,000 gold for each time I completed it. As well as, uh, I believe an elixir or something, and something else, like some really good stuff in general. So this is a really interesting dungeon and also a really, really weird dungeon. Uh, there are a lot of encounters here, that aren't runnable or are runnable, and it's the combinations are weird. I'm not. If, 
completely sure of every single one of them. Some of them may, may be runnable, some of them may not be. I will fire the ones that aren't, so for this I'll just use fire time. Every single combination of enemies can be checked as to whether it's runnable or not. And I, like, no matter which list you use for your, your runnable slash unrunnables, uh, it will, it is wrong. I can guarantee you that in advance. No matter where you got the list, it's wrong. Because there is no, to my knowing at least, no complete list in existence. Because every single combination is different. Not to mention, it also depends on what specific place you're in. So, a combination can be unrunnable here and runnable in some other dungeon. So yeah, it's, uh, it's weird. FF2, everybody. I could, icicles I do really like to see because that is something I know in advance that it's easy to run from it. Snowman as well. But with every one of these undeads, it's always tricky to figure out is it actually runnable and uh, or is it not? Do I have to fire it or do I not? Uh, I don't think this is unrunnable. I'll run with Maria and Furion and have Guy use the use fire. Yeah, I figured ghouls alone were. I have as many combinations as I know of written down, but that is not always enough because they are wrong. Because every list of this is wrong. Because this game makes no sense. Yeah, basically the reason we needed to go here is just to get the goddess bell so that we can get the, uh, the eagle's torch so that we can get the sunfire and blow up that giant airship we just saw earlier. That's really all this is for. Like, this looks like some really big, important quest, but in reality, that's it. That's all we're doing. Uh, okay, this is unrunnable. That's that's a clear one. Anything with a grenade in it is not runnable by default. That has a grenade, so easy choice. I hope I have enough fire tomes left after this. This will be interesting. So now we're coming to my favorite room in the game. It's full of beavers! So yeah, if you were to talk to the leader of the beavers, uh, it turns out Guy can actually talk to, talk to beavers for some reason, uh, which he uses to tell us that there is a secret hallway there. But you know, since the secret hallway exists regardless, we can make use of it even if he hasn't talked to the leader. Because the game actually doesn't check that. Ah, uh, this I'll have to kill. Also, I need Joseph to preferably not die. Yeah, that is awfully close to dying. A lot closer than I would have liked. Luckily, we have elixirs. There we go. See, problem solved. I don't actually have Phoenix Ants yet. They were way too expensive up to this point. So, you know, we're pretty much gonna have to deal without. So for the next boss, this is this is probably the harder boss, even though this is, this is not technically the boss of this dungeon. But this is the harder fight here, so yeah. We're just gonna have to do this with our, uh, with our bare hands. In the GBA run, you don't actually have defense, so the level isn't as high here. Uh, so they use Blizzard Tomes for this fight. Because this fight, this guy is practically immune to everything that is, you know, an, a regular attack. 
But we're so high leveled that we don't care. So getting out of there with only one character dead is fine. I would have liked that not to be Guy, but it's fine. Now before we move on, I am gonna re-equip those Mithril shields and those bucklers. Main reason just being that that will actually still allow me to run from enemies, which helps over the next uh, couple minutes. So all we need to do now is just walk out of the cave. Let's see if we can do that. Uh, Deadhead alone is fine. So next up, we're gonna we're gonna fight the, uh, the the general that we saw earlier that took over Bass. He's a really strong general. Ooh, and he even he even ambushed us. This is bad. Oh, we're fine. We did it. So yeah, that was uh, one of the major generals of the uh, of the empire. Clearly, they are very powerful people. But you know, that Empire, he's a bit of a mean guy, so he set a trap here, so that as soon as we would beat him, if we ever would, it would go off and, uh, well, this would happen, basically. So yeah, we can't outrun that, but uh, luckily Joseph, he's a strong guy, so he decides to, to hold the boulder. He already, he already says that he can't hold it much longer. And, uh, just as we have left the stairs, well, Joseph gets crushed by that particular boulder. So, uh, say goodbye to Joseph, because, uh, may he rest in peace. That being said, let's, uh, let's heal up Guy. Save move on with the game, because we have plenty more stuff to do. So yeah, now that we have the goddess's bell, it's, uh, it's time to move on. We should probably get some uh, some tomes, because we're going to be needing those over the course of the game. And uh, we're going to need some, uh, some heal items. You know, we have that money, we might as well start spending it, right? Yeah, that's a thing. I was wondering why I wasn't running from this, but I never re-equipped the shields. Ah, uh, this'll be interesting then. Just, uh, let's just do it like this then. See, there we go. See, the shields are important, guys. Always keep your shield up. That was the wrong character. I did not mean to heal him. Yeah, that should work. So with all that out of the way, we're uh, we're gonna move on because we might as well. Let, let's not let his death go in vain, shall we? We're gonna head towards uh, Poft again, and we're gonna take the airship one more time. Uh, actually, before I do, let me actually do that bit of shopping that I was talking about just now. Let's not forget my own. Or let's not forget the route, shall we? Let's 
generally not a good idea. So we can buy some uh, some teleport tomes here. Let's just buy 99 of them. Because why not? Uh, how about 99 high potions? Uh, actually, let, let me do 21 of each. Especially those. These aren't as important because these status effects don't show up as often. And a bunch of Phoenix Downs, because why not? So this is where I'm gonna have to do a bit of a bit of backtracking real quick. Uh, even though we're pretty much good to go in terms of all the items, uh, I am getting to the point where I'm gonna need a lot of fire tomes real soon, and I only have two. So instead of actually going on to the next town, which is ideally what I would want to do now, I'm actually gonna take a bit of a detour, which loses about a minute and a half, but I'll save most of that back over the course of the next few dungeons. Uh, you're gonna send me to Kajuan soon. Also, I should remember to actually put Phoenix Downs there and High Potions there. Now we're done with our menuing. Yeah, the reason we want all of these tomes is basically by using the tome as an item, it uses the level 8 variants of that particular spell. Uh, if I had to grind that out, I'd take an hour just on grinding, so that wouldn't really be an option. But since we pretty much have as much money as I could ever hope to use, uh, we're, we can just we can use it just fine. So it gets us really easy access to spells that we wouldn't normally have and having those spells is basically gonna help us get through the game especially teleport because even a lot of the bosses are weak to that spell and can just instantly be killed by it whether we'll succeed or not is mostly down to rng but the general idea is just use spells and win the game after, as soon as bare hand it becomes obsolete which is right after the boss of this place. I'm gonna make another safety go. Make plenty of safety saves in this game, boys. You'll need them, because it's FF1. Two. That's what I... But it, but yeah, okay. I've been up for almost 24 hours, so... Yeah. Yeah. It's been a long day, but, you know... Can't go wrong on finishing it with some FF2, can we? So it turns out that as soon as we got to the Casuan Keep, we actually meet Gordon. He kind of figured he would get the Sunfire as well, and if he had just told us, then you know, all of that we had that we just did did not actually need to happen. You know, Joseph would still be alive. Um, you know, we would have saved a lot of time not too important, unimportant either, I want to say. So yeah, basically because Joseph decided to be a jerk, we just wasted a ton of time and we have somebody killed that didn't actually need to die. But oh well. I guess that's just how it happens, right? Still gonna play safe here. There's not a lot of stuff in this dungeon that I actually trust. is fine. I have to be honest, considering we're at it for about an hour now, I'm surprised I haven't gotten lost yet. Shadow Ghoul, that is unrunnable. Okay, Fire Tome it is. See, this is why we have Fire Tomes.
just get rid of it. It's not faster than running, but it doesn't take that much longer. Rates should be fine. On my list, they're fine. Uh, I'm gonna have Guy use the use the fire time. Uh, yeah. Okay. So it is fine. These are always those tricky encounters because wraiths are not uh, runnable, but ghasts, for example, would not be. And if combined with a ghoul, wraiths suddenly become unrunnable again. You know, it's all kind of weird quirks like that. This may have been. Yeah, actually, I need to go down. Call that little bit there just the rust, I guess. Wait, it was this way, isn't it? Otherwise, I'm seriously confused, in which case, we managed to get that first point just after an hour. In. Uh, it would have been fine either way, then. Whatever. We got there. It's okay, boys. It's okay. We, we got this. We're almost at the Red Soul, which is the next major boss of the game. Uh, we're red. That's actually not runnable. Uh, so I could teleport this, which would theoretically be faster if every teleport would hit on turn one. If not, fire tomes are faster. So we're just going to go with the fire tomes and take the safe route, especially considering there were five of them. So yeah, this is where it comes in real nice to just have those fire tomes, because on average, it'll be faster to do it like this, but that's not a guarantee. Uh, eye drops. Save here, because this is always a hard boss. So this is one of the harder bosses in the game, uh, in that this guy can just screw you over in a lot of ways. Uh, this could be bad already. Depends a bit on what he does next turn. That's the first reset of the game. Uh, one of many at that. For those that have ever seen me run this game, they'll know exactly what I mean. Nice crit there. Good Red Souls fight. Second time around. Let's go. We did it. So you might think, okay, wait, the chest is right over there. Might as well grab it. But that has actually killed me in the past. So instead, I'm going to do all of my menuing first, and then we'll actually go get that. Uh, you get double buckler. Buckler, bronze, double buckler. Red Soul can be a pain at times, so getting it out of the way is a good thing, but I'm not going to take any risks, not even on those three steps there, because I have had an encounter before there, and that has lost me a lot of time before there. Uh, so I'll teach teleport to him. Let's teleport out. Why would we walk back? Walking back is for scrubs. Use the Eagle's Torch and finally get ourselves that Sunfire. So now that we have the Sunfire, we can blow up the Dreadnought. Well, let's do just that, shall we? No need to wait around with it. I'll teleport out real quick again. Uh, use a High Potion to heal him to full, and let's go. Oh, what's 
going on? Looks like some airship getting chased by another one. So yeah, if you'd actually sit out that cutscene, you'd see that uh, the princess just got captured by the Dreadnought. So uh, that could be an issue. Also, this is the only time in Final Fantasy 2 that you'll see this. But let's get some hype for a Chocobo! So yeah, with the Chocobo, we're going to run across the entire world map, pretty much. Get in, and just to get us into the Red Knot. So yeah, if we show this guy the pass, he'll just let us through. We can just kill him off, but, you know, that would mean an extra fight, which should be slow. Like, even including the fact that we needed to get the pass to begin with, that still saves me time. Uh, oh wait, no, mine. Mine is not runnable. My bad. So yeah, let's, let's start using those teleport tomes, see how they'll hold out. It's one down. And that's the other two. Let's go. So before we're actually going to destroy this airship, uh, there's one little quest that we need to finish. Gas Shadow, that might be runnable? I don't think it is, but it might be. Uh, so we'll use this strat again. My notes do mention Gas Wraith, but not Gas Shadow, and that can actually very much make a difference in this game, believe it or not. out there as well. There we go, good stuff. And you know, with those kind of things, just blow them up. This is again, this is the main dungeon What I want that I want my fire tomes for. Not having a lot of fire tomes for this dungeon is painful. So I'm picking up the Thieves Gloves. That's mostly to add some agility, which makes running just a little bit easier on me again. So it's kind of, it's, it's not necessarily a major difference. Uh, in the manipulation, we actually don't pick it up, but for a general run, it's definitely still worth it to get it. So yeah, with the gate open, we're gonna talk to Sid. We actually don't even need to talk to the princess, we're just gonna ignore her. And we tell them to, you know, get out of this place. And, you know, they're escaping a prison, and they're just casually walking around very slowly. I guess they don't really have that mindset of, oh, we're escaping a prison here, we might as well try to run. Gasts and gasts and rates. It's always good fun. So 
So this is the fun of these kind of dungeons, you know. Even though you can kill all this stuff, it's still so slow to get through it because most of this stuff is just unrunnable. It's nice to see some runnable encounters every now and again, but... Uh, just cast? Nope. It's on my list. Tomes and so We'll get through here. So yeah, basically, all we need to do is just blow up this airship, get rid of it once and for all, so that we can actually move on with uh, more important business. In the process, we also kind of save the princess, which is a nice little bonus here. Finally, something we could actually run from. Let's go. I think you're, I should probably save here, because I haven't actually saved anywhere in this dungeon just yet. Well, something a little less runnable again. No surprise there. To heal up Gordon. Uh, it's fine that I also healed up Gaia. I have plenty of high potions anyway. Come on, can I get something more runnable? So, the interesting thing with the step manipulation of this game is we can't actually manipulate what the encounter is. We can just manipulate where it is. So, even in a manipulator run, you still have no clue as to what you're gonna get, and you're still at the mercy of the RNG. Uh, the only difference is that you know exactly what tiles you're going to get it, so you can prepare for those specific tiles. Which, you know, for a dungeon like this, it doesn't actually make much of a difference, but there will be dungeons coming soon, and you'll know when I'm there, uh, where that would make a huge difference. So this is actually runnable. You know how werets weren't runnable in the last dungeon and ghasts aren't in this? Yeah, the combination is runnable again. I really have no idea how they ma how they managed to pull something like this off. Like in terms of runnability, it's it's just all over the place. Uh, this way. So yeah, if we if it would have worked, uh, and this has been tested, of course, uh, we would have just killed some of those guards and instantly gone for the exit. But that doesn't work, unfortunately, so we'll have to walk around manually. Come on, get that last one as well. We need all of these mines out of here. I knew that was the wrong one. I thought about that for a second, then decided, eh, actually, the next one has a guard, so that probably is the wrong one, or the right one, but... That's, uh, the problem with the rust. the end here. It's 
Time for the final room, almost. One more encounter we need to beat through and then we should be fine. Yeah, that's the last one done. Hopefully that'll that'll manage to get us into this part. No, one more. And of course it's a bad one too. Because why would the game give me a break? Stop me on the last one here. Of course. Not gonna change anything about my setup for this fight. Just gonna see if we can finish it. So now that we're here, we're gonna throw the Sunfire into the flames here. And we're gonna get a bit of a cutscene here. So we're going to see the Dark Knight one more time, asking us what, we's, what we've done with the engine. And Maria seems to recognize the voice, but we can't really check anything here. So yeah, we're going to see every single room we just passed, so that gets us uh, a nice little cutscene there. Gives me a chance to actually do the wiring of my mic properly. It's just getting in the way. Yeah, we're gonna... We're, we can actually skip that last bit of the cutscene there. Again, not skippable, for, the, for example, the GBA version, so... Luckily, we can save a bit of time on that. And with that, we're moving back to the... Uh, to the starting town. Because, you know, it's kind of been a recurring theme so far. So yeah, we're not actually going to the prince, we're instead going to the king, because something is going on here. The king is actually on his dying bed right now, and, you know, he, all, the, all the struggles with the war has caused his condition to worsen, and he's about to uh, reach the end of his life. But before he goes, he has one final task for each and every one of us. Uh, Gordon is to help Hilda take over the castle of Finn. Minwu is to look for Ultima, the ultimate magic spell, and we're supposed to help the dragoons who were lost not too long ago. With that, we're uh, going on those exact quests. Now, Ultima is a bit of a a useless quest. We are actually going to, going to end up spending close to an hour just preparing for that, even though we don't actually ever use the spell, but sure. Before I leave, and I have forgotten this on multiple occasions, I'm gonna learn Dragoons and I'm gonna learn Waverns here. If you forget that, you have to backtrack fairly soon and it loses about three minutes. So we're talking very significant time losses if that happens. Uh, let's see, use the eye drops, heal up. So yeah, with that, we're, uh, we're going on our quest to help the Dragoons, but first... Eh, I kinda don't feel like helping the Dragoons just yet. I might do, I might do something different first. We might just help Min Wu a little bit on that quest for the spell, because that looked really important, actually. That sounded like a really good spell. 
But yeah, in reality, we're passing the island with a black mask uh, on the way to the Dragoon's place, so there's no real point in us for in us not going there just yet. So yeah, this uh, this li nice lady, she offered us to, uh, a ride there, but then once on the ship, we got ambushed by pirates. But you know, we have fire jumps, which allows us to, allow us to use fire five. Which, you know, it doesn't seem like it may do a lot, but this is the effect after two. Uh, after three? There we go. One turn fight. Easy. You can actually do that with teleport, uh, but on average fire is just faster. And it's a lot more consistent. You could technically one-shot everything in one teleport, but the chances of that happening are just way too low. And uh, with us killing eight pirates in one go, Lila decides, you know what, I'll join your party and you can have my ship as well. It's kind of nice for us, right? Oh, that's fine. So yeah, our, uh, so Lila, she's gonna function as our new human meat shield as we progress through the next couple dungeons. So first we're gonna go get the Black Mask. We, were, we aren't actually supposed to know anything about the Black Mask yet, so we're kind of sequence breaking here. But we can get that already, and we need to get it at some point, and it's nicely on the way now. If we have to do it later, we'd have to spend a lot more time on it. The good thing about this dungeon, everything is runnable, so I'm actually not going to have to worry about unrunnable encounters for once. The only bad thing in this dungeon are ambushes. And we'll be seeing plenty of those. See, there's the first one already. Let's go away from that. Do not want to fight that. So yeah, basically here, like, the amount of encounters I'm gonna get is roughly the same every time. So the time you get for this dungeon basically get determined by the quality of your boss fight at the end, and just the amount of, uh, or the amount of ambushes you get over the course of this dungeon. Because at this point, running is practically guaranteed anyway. Not sure why I high potioned her, I shouldn't have, but it's fine. That, okay, that could be bad. I was kind of supposed to put them in the back row there. Please don't kill me now. Okay, Maria, please. Thank you. Okay, that almost was really, really, really bad. Thank you for not actually killing me off game. That would have been probably my biggest screw up yet today. And I freaking had a GameCube that crashed and uh, destroyed our schedule, so, you know. So yeah, the single ambush, completely fine. Let's move. So we're already starting to near the end of this dungeon. You can see how incredibly fast the dungeons can go once you actually have the ability to just go through it in one sitting and just not have to kill every single encounter along the way. So it's kind of neat how that works out. 
So this is the first of the bosses that we're going to do differently. This is Bighorn, and Bighorn is actually... Do keep in mind this is a boss fight, and this is the first boss we'll, where we'll be using Teleport. Let's see how that's going to work out. Remember, these are bosses. That's one of them down. Because, you know, why would bosses have to be invulnerable to instant death? That's three of the four down. Come on, guy, get the last one. And then we'll actually have had a pretty good dungeon. Nice. That gets us the Black Mask, which is one of the key items we'll be needing later. We'll get back to that mask in like an hour or so. Now with that done, let's move on to the, the Cave of the Wavern. The City of the Wavern, or whatever it is. See what we can uh, what we can do for them. Uh, hold on. Am I this far south? Ah, okay, I went too far. Rip me. This is where I needed to be. Good thing we have a world map in this, uh, in the game itself. How did I already expect this would happen? Literally for a style on land, on runnable encounter. So yeah, this is the part where a lot of the encounters become unrunnable, and we actually find a different kind of enemy, which we'll be probably seeing shortly once we actually get into the cave here. Uh, this is There is going to be one encounter in this next dungeon that we cannot kill, and we cannot run from. Uh, basically meaning I'll be saving a lot, and we'll try to just hope and not to not get that encounter. Which is actually something that will be happening a lot more over the course of the run. Uh, what am I doing? I'm not supposed to go in the castle yet. So first I'm supposed to get the pendant. Once I have the pendant, I can talk to the wavern. It is unfortunately also unrunnable. Dude, nice. Four people asleep at once. Luckily... Sound, sounds like BSG right now. Everybody asleep at once. I guess I'll be joining them soon enough. Guess it does, doesn't it, Rule? It, it does sound ominous. Yeah, uh, this is the first cave where we're going to start finding unrunnable, unkillable encounters. Basically meaning we'll see encounters that we just have to reset the game for. Uh, which is also a major part of the RNG in Final Fantasy 2. We haven't actually seen the worst yet. If you thought up to this point it was RNG heavy, you have not seen the worst yet. Trust me. It's about to come up. And we'll most likely be seeing it somewhere along this head. So we got the pendant. We're just going to warp out of here. Heal up Furion real quick. Get moving. So yeah, the, in general, the hill gigases here are just are fine. They're annoying because I have to teleport them away, but other than that, they're not too bad. 
It's usually pretty quick to get rid of them anyway. Go. See, now that that's done, we can actually get into the castle again and start talking to that Wavern, shall we? So yeah, we're asking the Wavern for help here, and we're gonna tell, tell him about the, the, you know, we're gonna ask him about what happened to the Waverns. It turns out that all the Dragoons are dead, and so are all of the Waverns, but this particular Wavern has an egg. The thing is, it will never hatch unless we put it in the springs and in the, uh, at the core of that dungeon that we were just in. So, since, since having Dragoons and Waverns could probably help if you're fighting a war, you know, we might as well just do that real quick. See how many tries it's gonna take this time to get rid of the Hilgigas. These enemies are the literal, literal worst, like stuff that you have to just teleport away and then they don't actually get teleported away in like ages. But yeah, it's not the worst encounter. There is one encounter that I would like, would like to see even less than that. That's the yellow soul. That's the partic that's the encounter that I will reset over as soon as I see it. Because there's nothing I can do in order to kill them. Excuse me, yawning, by the way. It's, uh, it's been a long day. mind seeing this shadow ghoul pack around here because sh the generally the fire tomes will still be a lot faster than the teleport tomes ideally I, I'd see revenants or something and just run away but if anything those are the best things to see after that just because I can just get rid of them without having to worry about it too much just use fire So yeah, that's an encounter I cannot run from, and it's an encounter that I cannot kill. So, yay. We were about to we were about to see at least one or two of these. Basically I'm just gonna have to reset the game over and over until I get a different encounter. This uh this is why this cave is as brutal as it is. Okay, Revenants. That's the perfect encounter. Revenants are the only thing around here that are actually runnable, I think. So, getting the Revenants is huge. It's good stuff. Ah, 
And there are some more. This'll be a long floor at this rate. So yeah, welcome to FF2, where... <laughs> where we're, uh, where we can't just get stuck on this kind of encounter. It sucks when we do, but there's not much I can do about it. Ah, uh, teleport. That's more like it. Now if we can get rid of this hill I guess, and actually move on. Just a suggestion game, but... There we go. So yeah, the very reason we save between every single encounter around here. Or even after every couple steps we take, because we know what can happen around here. That was a very long stretch there. And then on to more yellow souls. We're almost through this floor, by the way. We're getting pretty close to the end of this dungeon. Luckily. Hopefully that'll be the last souls we'll see, because I really can't use too many more. Well, spoke too soon. This is a very slow diced cave, I'll say. Just over the fact that I've seen, this is a ridiculous amount of souls, like, on an average run I get about six, maybe seven. We're well above that already. That's actually fine. Let's go. I'll heal and save once I've gone down the stairs. Okay, now the part that I always doubt myself on. There is one part later on where it's the second door, and then there's this part which is the third door, and I always confuse the two. So this is a really interesting boss fight. This boss fight can be anywhere between two and four chimeras, so we got worst RNG in that regard. Uh, and then we need to teleport all of them away, so we can still be fine if we get, like, the second teleport or something. That's three. Let's get the remaining one. Not gonna 
gonna lie, Shady. I'm not gonna lie. I kind of am, but you know, counts for most of us here that have been up for almost 24 hours. So it gets exhausting, but it's you know, it's fun. So we'll finish the run, and then it's time for uh, sleep. Yeah, this is exactly why I saved there. Even though it's only two tiles here, I've actually had a run once where I took the, the second step and then got into a Yellow Souls encounter and had to do the entire boss over. That can happen because FF2. Uh, where is it? Waver egg. So we're just gonna drop off the egg and then we're done here. We can finally get out. So we've done our part for the Waverns. There's not much more we can do uh, for them, honestly. So uh, let's move back to uh, the starting town once more, shall we? Ogre Mage is actually not runnable. Get the Ogre Mage. Shouldn't be too hard. So yeah, that's uh, one of the worst parts of the run done. Uh, that area has more unrunnable stuff than most other dungeons, so happy to get that out of the way. I mean, we're not, we're not entirely done just yet. Not by far, but... We're getting there. Our town, and uh, we're gonna meet up with the princess again. I mean, we've done our job for the Waverns, so we should probably see what our next job is going to be. Actually, I think I haven't safety saved in a while. Let me let me do that real quick. Yeah, that was like a good two minutes ago, which is actually a lot for this game. Oh, she wants to speak to us alone. That's interesting. The princess! What's this? And then she turned into a Lamia Queen. Because yay. So yeah, it turns out the it turns out the princess was an imposter, and she's actually the Lamia Queen, which is the next boss. That's also not nice safe there. That wasn't obvious yet. So yeah, this this boss can be a one-shot, or it can take ten turns to go down. It's completely RNG. Second try is not bad at all. It's a good fight. So yeah, if that was the Lamia Queen, that means the princess must still be captured. And immediately after we hear that, you know, the princess has actually been captured and is offered as a price at the Colosseum. So, you know, I think we know where to go next. With uh, Gordon as our human meat shield. Let's go to let's go to go see what that castle holds. See if we can save the princess. Ah, uh, yeah, that works.
Okay, let's go sail to this Colosseum then. Let's see if we can actually uh, find the princess. Now I'm gonna save here. Pretty much everything here is runnable, but I'm not going to take any risks if I don't have to. So for the longest time, I actually thought that was the one unrunnable here. Then it turned out it was runnable after all, so we stopped caring as much. Or at least I did. Andre, that's fine. Interesting encounter, but I'm not gonna care too much. Let's get into the Colosseum, shall we? Smooth walk right there. Let's go. So yeah, turns out that, you know, surprise, surprise, it was a trap. Yeah, who could have guessed that? Yeah, it turns out he's gonna force us into a fight with a behemoth. Because, yay, now we have to fight this kind of stuff. The Emperor is definitely not a kind guy. Here we are, coming to visit his tournament, and now we're fighting a behemoth. Yeah, same story here as Lamia Queen. Could be first one. Uh, yeah, there we go. That was the behemoth. Second try on both is pretty good. It's very acceptable. So, you know, now we're gonna get the princess, right? Except he knew that we were rebels, so he's gonna get us captured. So not only do we not have the princess, now we're also captured. It's good stuff right there. By the way, Rule, if you're not doing anything, you're to join me on the couch. You can use the company right now. Uh, it's getting late and I'm getting tired, and I'm starting to notice that. So yeah, this is a really interesting dungeon for one reason and one reason only. We can walk through walls. Uh Yeah, you might as well. There should be another headset still. And if uh, our good friend uh, Rico would be so kind as to connect it and make sure the audio is correct. See why not. So I'm safety saving a lot here, mostly because I know some of these encounters can and will kill me if I give them the opportunity. But yeah, we basically... Uh, there's basically a secret hallway in most of those prison cells, so we can walk through most of them. Uh, just, just easy, skips half of the... It skips a good couple minutes, actually, by walking through the walls here. Makes it a lot less... Dungeon crawling, basically. Prisons with uh, walkable walls. Yeah. Good you know, prisons. Good prisons. Well, I mean, I'm I'm presuming they're just openings in the walls. We just can't see them. <laughs> oh, I mean, prisons will help you through walls. Yeah. It doesn't really make it any better. If anything, it makes it worse. If anything, but you know, I I would not mind being in such a prison. <laughs> At least it'd be easy to get out. Boy, you rebel. Nice, getting the runnable stuff so far. Gotta be careful with not running into something stupid here, because there are quite a few encounters here that you don't want to run into. 
But yeah, that was a that was a really good Coliseum. Yeah, that went fast. So let's go back to. Uh, well, let's not let's not actually go to the starting town, but let's go visit Hilda again. Apparently, hopefully, now she's actually out, and with that, we can actually get there. Because you know, we still have several quests from the king uh, to complete. We still haven't found Ultima, and we still haven't taken back ca the the castle of Finn. Granted, Ultima is a bit of a fool's quest, so I'd rather just skip that in general. Only problem is we can't. You need to first not find Ultima before you can not find Ultima. Basically, yeah. That makes sense. Nice boat, dude. All right. It was. You know what the best part of this boat is? It was free. <laughs> Sweet. Well, after we killed some pirates, but, you know, who cares? They're pirates. And hey, what's a, what's a few lives to pay, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Come on, we gotta go fast. It's more important, clearly. So yeah, we're going into Finn Castle, and this is actually a tricky dungeon in that almost everything here is unrunnable. So, lots and lots of painful encounters that we ideally didn't want to see. The Chimeras over here being a prime example of that. Ah, it's good to be back in the presence of the Warp Scrolls. Layla! Yeah, Layla's back. It's nice, right? <laughs> Getting a fourth party member. Crystal Crash, so Layla. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, hey, at least we have our human meat shield again. Good. Um, the operation get back to Layla. I'm fairly confident this is unrunnable, but I'll set up uh, Maria to try and run regardless, just in case. <laughs> nope. Nope, then it's probably not runnable. I can say that with about 90% accuracy now. That's pretty good. Oh, dude. He looks nice. Yeah. So yeah, this is uh, the next little boss of the game. This is Gatos. <laughs> Not to be confused with Gato, you know, from, that's Chrono Trigger, but... Yeah, this guy, he actually took the throne in Finn, but, you know, he's weak, as you can tell. He goes down in one hit. How do you take the throne? Yeah. You, you, you'd wonder why somebody like that would ever be able to get to the throne, right? Yeah. So yeah, that means we've taken back the castle of, uh... Oh, whoops, that was not what I meant to do. So we've taken the castle of Finn, we've helped the Dragoons, let's go for that Ultima quest, right? Uh. <laughs> Apparently there's some secret... We, If we were to talk to the other guy, uh, Gordon, he would tell us that there's a secret hallway there, but we need to uh -huh. use the magic words on it. So, you know... Since I kind of already knew that was a thing, I just did. So you just said please? Yes, pretty much. So this dungeon is probably the weirdest one in the entire game. Everything on floor 1 is unrunnable, and everything on floor 5 is unrunnable. However, there are green souls on both floors 4 and 5, which are runnable on 4, but unrunnable on 5. That's not a joke. That's an encounter that's unrunnable on the fifth floor, yet runnable on the fourth floor. Because FF2. Yeah, that sounds logical, sure. Yeah. Let's go for that. Yeah. You drop a little bit further into the dungeon, eh, they're not gonna let you run anymore. They're pretty much the worst encounter in the game, because as soon as I get into a fight with them, I'm basically soft-locked. Uh, they will keep healing me instead of attacking me, so I won't die in game over. Um... This way, right? Yes. So yeah, I won't die in game over. Um, they will. Uh, 
they, I have nothing to actually hit them with. So I can't actually damage them. Yeah, as soon as I were to get one on floor 5 and I hadn't saved, it's basically a soft lock. Some meat shield at 1 HP. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> she functions as a proper meat shield and regardless of what health she's at. The thing is, the reason I want to keep her at 1 HP is because now they can only use spells. So I can very quickly run, skip two attacks. Yes, I'll have to do some extra menuing, but that kind of evens out. Yeah. So, you know, she's a very functional meat shield. Ah, uh, there's this, there's. <laughs> See you later. Let me actually save her just in case, but... So yeah, this is what this is that floor that I was talking about. Green souls are runnable on this floor, but they're not on the next. That adamant was, but no, not the adamant. It's the the green guy that you saw, the Ogre no, the select oh, this guy. the stack select mites. Those are also going to be unrunnable as soon as we hit the next floor. So I'm gonna force an encounter here because I know this is gonna be runnable, just to give me as many steps on the next floor as possible. Hopefully, skip an encounter. Oh god. You are up to your nose in dirty water. Yeah. Hey, I mean, we're five floors under the ground. What'd you expect? Sewers. Yeah, pretty much. Sewers sounds like a plan. Oh, six of them in one <laughs> go. Not bad. Not bad. Nice. Cancelled out all of their attacks at that. Now to get rid of that last one, though. Yeah, he is not letting up. Oh, there we go. So I'm gonna immediately, immediately save again because I know everything here is unrunnable, including green souls, which is the thing I don't want to see. Everything else I'm fine with. Like these stalagmites, sure they're annoying, but I know we have to go through them, and every runner does. Okay, that's not bad, but the first two are the ones that are attacking, so I don't kind of want to get rid of those two more than any... It works. There we go. <laughs> We're almost at the next of them, uh, the next mask, with which we have the both of the masks, and we can go for the crystal wand. There's the white mask. Just... Two of the three key items done that I need in order to enter the dungeon with uh, with Ultima in it. Let's get the two that will most likely attack. Get the one that will attack if we don't kill him right now. Do it. There we it go. It worked. Good stuff. Let's get out of here, though. Kind of done with that dungeon. Yeah. Oh, look at this big guy. So yeah, let's uh, let's continue, shall we? See if we can get the third of the three quests done from the king. Let's see if we can get that ultima tone. Even though it's a spell that we'll never actually use even if we get it, but, you know, that's beyond the point. I mean, ultima is the world destroyer. Yeah, it's the ultimate magic spell. It's, uh, it's really powerful. It's also really, really useless, but... You know, for casuals, it's a somewhat decent spell. Even, oh even, even, com uh, even if you upgrade the spell completely and you completely level that thing as casually, it's still not that powerful. It's not terrible, but it's not what you'd expect when you say it's the ultimate magic spell. Yeah, it's no meteor. No, definitely no meteor or flare for that matter. Triple flare, bro. So this is Mysidia. That place where the mages come from. 
three of those real quick. This is uh, Final Fantasy II Doshiban. I think this is the one with teleport. Yes. I also need some blink oh, tones. There we go. Don't tell him to go to bed. He just got here. He's tech right now. Get some blink downs for your uh, meat shield. <laughs> Yeah, maybe some high potions as well while we're at it. We have the money to spend anyway. That's the before last shopping in the entire remainder of the game, pretty much. Oh, wow. I'm only going to do... Only, if, if all goes to plan, at least, I'm only going to shop one more time. So remember that white mask that we just got? Yeah, let's drop it off. We don't need it anymore. <laughs> Damn, you made her a Pokemon. Yeah. She's now a Pokemon with a white face. So, with that out of the way, let's go for the next place, because this next dungeon is actually probably one of my least favorite in the game. It's one of the longest ones, it's one of the hardest ones, and it's one of the most RNG-heavy ones. So, it's not, it's not the final dungeon, but it's not a lot better. <laughs> the power of sugar. At least we're getting run uh, runnable encounters on the way so far. There's tons of stuff around here that's unrunnable, including that behemoth we just found uh, fought back at the Colosseum. We can actually encounter it randomly here. Oh, that's good. Whoa. Yeah, they may look derpy, but they're actually really bad to fight. They're resistant to almost everything. I love a lot of the Final Fantasy II monster designs. Oh, definitely. FF2 is amazing monster design. They all look so... I don't know. Derpy. <laughs> They're gonna get you. Hey. <laughs> yeah, that, basically. Okay, now for a dungeon that I even get lost in if I'm not rusty, so let's see how this will go. Did you get some EDM with your uh, engineer? Oh well. So this is considered the doppelganger. Whoever stands in front of it, that's the face you'll see. And by placing the white mask on the statue that we did and the black mask on that, we can get rid of him. Or just don't kill me. Hey. This encounter is fine <laughs> if it doesn't kill me. Oh, well. Well, he was about to kill me. With everybody in front row, we wouldn't have lived, so we might as well save the animations and just reset right there. Yeah. That's more like it anyway. That's runnable. Ah, oh, that's what Marlboros looked like in this game? Yeah. I've only extensively played Final Fantasy XIV, so it's like... Hey, it's I always mean, interesting to see I the, mean, uh, if we're the talk roots. If we're talking prevention of cancer, yeah, that's what you're buying when you're buying that kind of stuff. <laughs> right? <laughs> it, suit, it suits the name. Yep. Uh, I think it was this one, but I might be wrong. Yeah, I figured I was wrong. Shout out to BSG Marathon, doing a charity marathon for the Prevent Cancer Society, uh, for the, no, for the Dutch Cancer Society. So keep your donations coming in. There we go, that's the door that I needed. We're gonna get rid of that poison at some point, by the way. Oh, that's that's unrunnable, unkillable. Oh, that's good. That's that's the one encounter that I absolutely do not want to see today. 
because there's nothing I can do if I get it. I hate to break it to you, man. Just fine. Eh, I saw plenty more yellow souls earlier. That wasn't fun. Okay, well, hereby we've gotten rid of the poison, so... Oh, that's good. That's a pretty effective way to get rid of poison. Yeah, right? We just kill the person that is poisoned and then just revive him from death. Yeah. Seems legit. Death step. That seems like a good idea. I thought this was unrunnable, but I'm actually starting to doubt myself on that. I mean, your list is incomplete, so... Uh, so well, this is a problem in general, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You're not gonna run if they're gonna be petrified. Yeah. They are indeed unrunnable, by the way. I just checked. Oh, they are okay. actually on my list, and I know my list isn't complete, but... It's it's still on there, sure, that should say accurate. enough. Well, actually, it's not. Oh. Because even then, uh, it's so weird that certain encounters on sp certain specific places are uh, are runnable and then on others aren't. Right. It just makes no sense regardless. They still need to not petrify me, by the way. Yeah, that can just happen. Because FF2. Oh, whoa! <laughs> okay there. That was fast. I figured, eh, if I break everybody, we'll, uh, it's still faster than resetting, so... I, I guess. Plus, at least I got to show that off for once. What, you should just save every step of Jake. Yeah, that's... We're already practically doing that in this game. <laughs> Especially when it comes to the final dungeon. You're literally saving every five steps. Every move you make. Oh boy. Oh, that's fine. You turned Spanish. <laughs> yeah. I know. Oh no, the worst. Uh, no. There you go. See? We're back to normal. It's fine. Oh, good. So yeah, this is probably the worst floor. So let's uh, let's get ready. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Hi. Uh, okay. I'll see if I can move my mic a little bit further away. Sorry. Oh, fun. There we Yellow. go again. Yellow flam. Okay, let me see if this works better. Let me know if it's not. Okay, let's see. Now we're getting, we're fine. Hurry. This is as bad as these things may be. I can at least run away. Would you say the speedrun saves more often than a casual run? Uh, possibly yes. Uh, I would not doubt that we might save more than a casual run. Would. Then again, knowing this game, I'd figure a casual runner would save a lot as well. Wait, Ryo's is incredible? I thought Ryo's was. Uh, that's fine, I have to teleport. Uh oh. Still fine. And if not, we save every six steps anyway. <laughs> it's not as if I'm going to lose a lot of progress. See, the the good, the fun thing about Final Fantasy 
uh, too, is as inconsistent as a run it is, it is very marathon safe. Not so much time-wise, but in just general consistency. You will always get screwed over in an equal amount. Roughly. Not to mention, you know, since you save every six steps, you know, you'll get roughly the same amount of progress in on average. Granted, the difference between a good run and a bad run is easily half an hour, but... I think during the final fun the second Final Fantasy Relay, me and Delm, the current world record holder, raced this, and we had over half an hour difference between our two runs. Eff effectively, it wasn't that much, but he's his PSP crashed uh, 20 minutes in, and he hadn't saved yet. So he had to redo the 20 minutes and still ended up ahead of me. <laughs> wow. At that point, I... Our team was still ahead, but only because we were that much ahead but, uh, through Final Fantasy 1 before us. That was quite something. I should mention he did world record that run, but... And the I... World record that run after... No, in, I, excluding the 20 minutes, of course. But, you know, I had a, a run just under estimate. And he world recorded, so... Wow. Yeah, we ended up uh, on that particular run half an hour apart. So, it's not a very consistent game. Wow. Still, it's a fun game to do every now and again. It's pretty easy to learn as well. Even though it's, it's a crazy uh, RNG heavy category, it's still, it's very easy to get down. The general movement isn't that difficult, so I can strongly recommend it to anyone anyone that is, you know, at least a little bit crazy. You need to be a little bit crazy to do this, but if you are, you know, might just be a good one for you. Being a lot crazy helps too. Yeah, being a lot crazy makes this easier, honestly. The crazier you are, the better. Yeah, because else you won't be here, uh, like... Six in, the morning. Six in the morning, two hours into the game, playing Final Fantasy II, which is a crazy game to begin with. Yeah, sounds about right. Oh, sweet. Yeah. So yeah, we really only have a couple dungeons left, but we still have a lot of ground to cover, to be honest. So let's see uh, how well this will go. wondering why I saved here, but you'll see. Should have actually saved inside, but it doesn't matter much. Oh no, it's World Ball. Yup. <laughs> oh. So yeah, we just got swallowed by, Levi by Leviathan, because uh, that's fun. Now, much like in Final Fantasy 1 and the Etrian Odyssey runs, which we've both seen before, where, you know, the encounter rate for boot become less on, on lava tiles, well, FF2 has acid tiles for that. It's almost the same. Pretty much. Uh, uh, I hope that doesn't kill me. So yeah, having lost my human my human meat shield earlier. This will be interesting to say the least. Guardian of his small intestine. Nah, he's actually this is the dragoon. So he's actually a good guy. Uh, he got swallowed as well because he also has the crystal rod. Anybody that has the crystal rod, you know, basically anybody searching for the ultimate magic is going to get stuck in here. 
And since Ricard was also looking for the ultimate magic, he also kind of ended up getting stuck in here. Uh, I'll replace that. I actually should have replaced this with ice, ice shields a while ago. That'll do. For a second there, I forgot you only use magic. You only scroll magic. <laughs> you. You really find you with two shields. Two shields is just for the running part of it, honestly. Oh, gross. I hope he gets more dopey as soon as you fight him. Nope. <laughs> There you go, this is the roundworm. He's uh, guarding our ship, so to speak. Okay, wait. And so close that that can be an issue. Okay. I moved mine a bit further out, hopefully that'll work. My mic should be above my nose, so... Okay, and with that, we're gonna, we're gonna enter the dungeon with my favorite soundtrack, hands down, but it's also one of the hardest dungeons in the game. This, this place is, uh, is long and difficult. Yeah, this is the Mycidian Tower. It's a 10-story uh, dungeon with, at the top of it, the, uh, the Ultimata. You know, that thing that we've been looking for. Oh, good. Also, I realize I may have set the timing in speedrun.com wrong. Uh-oh. I may have said it to three hours, so that yes. should be interesting. Yes, you did. Uh, that'll be interesting. Yeah. Yeah, but not in speedrun.com. So yeah, it is, but not on the actual schedule. That'll be interesting. We'll just try to PB by 10 minutes. Oh, that's good. Let's do it. I've been on pace for it at a BSG before. It's not impossible. Yeah, but on that seed, you get ambushed by the boss 17 times. Yes, that's true. We'll just see where we end up and we'll work from there. Boy, I was delirious. Okay, at least most of them broke out of confusion, so we can move on. On to Mycidian Tower 4-2. know how we deal with poison, right? We've done, we've done this before. The, the basic idea is the same. We're just going to leave him poisoned until he dies at some point. We don't care. See? Now he's dead. Solves itself. Hooray. The death of our ally. Same story as before. Lava tiles don't spawn encounters. We should have taught this technique to the people of Pompeii before. They could have used some lava water. They definitely could have, yes. That would have been nice for them, but you know. <laughs> it's kind of too late now. Looks like the monsters often disappear by kind. Is that 
something that is actual or is that just that's, confirmation? That's just that just happens every now and again because it's random. Okay. There's no actual pattern to it whatsoever. Because I thought I saw it earlier with some uh, when you had like three different types of enemies. Yeah, and that's two fair. Of them disappeared. And I was like, mm. I like pattern recognition. Yeah, unfortunately, there's no pattern there. It's just pure luck based. So this is the first of the three bosses that we're gonna fight throughout this dungeon. This is the Fire Gigas. <laughs> he looks so chill. I know, right? He's a cool dude, but, you know, he's kind of in my way. He kind of doesn't want to let me pass, so... He would actually let me pass, that'd be nice. Today, he said, not today, but maybe with this set of teleports. Fire Gigas, if you will. That there we go. Sure That's the first of three bosses done. That's fine. This is an easy to run encounter, so as long as we survive, we're fine. More chocobo balls. Where the hell do you see a chocobo? Well, I got the, the confuser. Oh, the confuser. Yeah, okay. That's fair. Luckily, we can't actually hit ourselves in confusion because we're only wearing shields. <laughs> That's not an encounter I want to fight. That's more like it. Not as same as before. Spikes don't actually give an encounter. We can walk through the wall there to skip a good bit of this floor. Does the poison and the uh, walking through spikes snack? Uh, I actually don't know. I have to be honest, I never looked into that. Doesn't really matter. Because you don't run out of HP anyway. Even if I did, I don't care. <laughs> I'll just die and, you know, we'll revive him afterwards. <laughs> Get rid of the poison. Exactly. I mean, I have antidotes, but I can't be bothered to use them. Ooh. I kind of need to get rid of that bomb, like, right about now. Two more, because he'll kill one character, and then I have. Okay, there, there we go. go. That'll do it. Here comes the second of the bosses of this place. You may have already guessed it the Ice Kiss. Same strat as before. Just teleport and hope to get lucky. Actually, this guy looks chill. This guy is chill. Like this, made it's, the, it's the very definition of chill. I see. See, he's, he even was chill enough to just get out of our out of our way quickly. Good. 
Okay, time for the longest floor in the dungeon. This is my least favorite floor in this dungeon. All the other ones will be pretty fast after this, but this one's long. And usually filled with souls, so let's hope we don't see those. Because that would actually greatly benefit the mar marathon at this point, I think. Well, got these guys again, which is honestly better than getting souls, because at least this I can kill. Yeah. Two more. There we go. Good stuff. Save. There we go. That was a bit of a weird menu, but sure. It'll do. It'll do. At least we got that through that floor pretty well. This will not screw me over. Because this is actually a really short floor, and if we can get past this guy, then we'll probably be able to get to the end pretty quickly. Nice. The last couple floors are usually not the worst, because the chances of souls quickly reduce here, I think. Okay, time for the third and final boss of this dungeon. The Thunder Gigas. Oh, he actually ambushed us. Nice. Dang. Because, yeah, uh, I don't think I've actually mentioned that, but bosses in this game can actually ambush you. Uh, even so far as the final boss. Yeah, at least he died in one hit. Which we found out painfully last time. Yeah, last PSG, I think I got ambushed like 14 times. I uh, got killed yeah. by him like 17 before I actually managed to beat him. It, it took a while. Yeah, it took a good 15 minutes. That was, uh, that was rough. Rip the PB. Yeah, I was about to PB by like, I think like 14 minutes, and then I got stuck on him for 15. So yeah, that was something. I remember it fondly. It was back when we had the setup the other way around. Yeah. Feels like long ago, but... I think that's the one BSG that I haven't fully attended. So it was only there till the FF2 run, because then I had to go. Yeah. Back in like June or something. Yeah. Wow. We've been doing this for a while now. Yeah, definitely. Hey, you too. Thank you. And good morning to you. You're up early. Like I said, the last floors usually aren't too bad. <laughs> I mean, even this should be fine, as long as we, as they don't do something too stupid. If I get one chance to run, I'm out of this fight, so... <laughs> he got poisoned, he got killed by the poison, actually. They're pretty strong. Still okay, still awake works too. So yeah, with that, we're finally on the 10th floor and we're going to get the Ultima Tome here. With that, there is uh, only three dungeons left. Noise. We're not going to stay under under three, but... <laughs> we're not going to stay under three. Whether that's a possibility? Well, under three hours in this game has been done before. 
record is like 254, I think. And Joe PB is 340? 314. Oh. I thought to meet the 330 estimate, you'd have to be speed beat by 10 minutes. No, to meet the time I put on the schedule, we do. <sighs> so, yeah. That's on me. Let's go under three. Let's go under three. Let's do it. Even though... Uh, it's no actually, more ac random encounters. Actually, it's four dungeons left now that I think about it. But oh. one of them is fairly short. Mm -hmm. The golden ball. Okay, we out of there. It's over. The small stuff at beach. Yeah, we had to we had to see the sights, right? Mm. Can't go to some some far off island that nobody's ever reached and then not do that. Can't believe how close it was to the main island. We've never been more than 20 miles from our home. Is there a giant tornado in the background? Yeah, that is a giant tornado in the background. Okay, that's good. Uh, the, apparently the, the Emperor figured, you know, hey, uh, they're mean to us. They're trying to actually fight us. Let's summon a giant tornado and destroy them. It's not doing a very good job at it. No, but it's heading our way, so we kind of need to, uh, you know, destroy that thing first. Yeah. And I, I know just what to, what to use for that. Uh, I hope I can... Dude, that's going to be seven years bad luck. We're not breaking the mirror, actually. Oh, we're just taking the Yoshi egg, too. No, we're getting the wavern from it. Remember that wavern that we dropped off in the pond earlier? Yes. Yeah, that's the wavering we just got. He just flew here through the sky uh, on our command. And we just, it just so happens that Ricard, who's now with us, is a dragoon. So the wavering and the dragoon are together once more. Oh, It's a beautiful reunite, reun uh, reunion, isn't it? Yes. I thought. Dragoons and dragons weren't that well, I guess we're in town. Dragoons are in. Eh, it's Final Fantasy. It, logic doesn't matter too much. So with that out of the way, we're gonna get one item here real quick. Come on. Oh, boy. Ah, uh, that, that one. Yes, the most powerful weapon in the game, hands down. And it's just in some kind of, in some innkeeper's pantry. Well, he's not an innkeeper, he's actually a master thief. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? That doesn't look like a tornado. No, this is the cyclone, which uh, is a castle inside a tornado attacking another castle. Yeah, try to rub your head around that one. Whoever's in this castle's gotta be dizzy AF. Very much so, yes. <laughs> you just enter the living quarters and it's full of bombs. This would be a great idea, but it's actually terrible. <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, it can't be that smart to have... Oh, uh, yeah, that's not something I can fight. That's the uh, unkillable, unrunnable there that I did not want to see, because we Yellow were kind of on a tight schedule. A bit tighter than I would have liked, but... <laughs> <laughs> I panicked, okay? <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, 
we were in full on. Well, not full on. We no, were like we were seventy percent of the way there. Yeah. That is, uh, we we were, uh, we're, we're we were about to have a heart attack there because everything was off. You know, without it just all started breaking at the same time. Yeah. Because at first we figured, you know, we'll just ev do Evil Land and FF2, which in hindsight would have actually worked because that would have been about half an hour faster. But then we couldn't get Evil Land to work. So, uh, yeah. Then we plugged some stuff in and then it worked. Yeah, but in the meantime, we were 20 minutes further. We had done another run in the meantime, but, you know. It was uh, an interesting night shift, I'll say that much. Okay, despite the fact that these guys can petrify me, I'm very happy to see Cockatrices here. They're one of the best encounters you can get in this dungeon. Hey, they'll just flat out kill Ricard real quick and let me move on. Okay, the boss is already on the next floor. Uh, the thing is, this next boss is the hardest boss in the game. Uh, it is not uncommon to get stuck on him for uh, for some time. Uh oh. So let's hope we'll get lucky. This guy's harder than the final boss. Yes. Quite a bit so. How many ambushes are we expecting? Uh, considering we need three consecutive fights without ambushes, a lot. Good. So yeah, just to give you guys a, br a brief heads up of what's about to happen. You see these Royal Guard encounters? Yeah, the boss fight has two of those in front of them and I can't heal between. So I have to get into the boss fight with, uh, after having killed two packs of Royal Guards. And if that somehow still hasn't killed Ricard, I need to get through that boss fight with at least two characters alive by the time I kill three out of four enemies. Because one of them actually can't be teleported away, and it'll kill one of my characters every turn. That seems like a bad. It's not a fun fight, I'll say that much. We get past that one, though. Uh, the next dungeon after isn't as difficult. Because this is a, a fairly tough dungeon, and then we get a bit of a break, and then the final two dungeons, which pretty much are back to back. Welp. Luckily, we had a safety save. Luckily, we safety save everywhere. So it doesn't even matter. I guess I'll save at the start of 7 then. So this is the final floor of the Cyclone. This is the short one you mentioned. The what one? The short one. Ah, uh, yeah, this, this is the shorter one I mentioned, yes. This is a fairly short dungeon unless you really get trolled by these guys. The only thing that's long about this dungeon is the boss. And then the next one isn't that long either, and the one after that is fairly short as well. Uh, it's mainly just the final dungeon. That dungeon is going to take some time. Because the final dungeon on really solid RNG takes about 12 minutes. Oh, gee. And that's on godlike RNG, which is why I know that I'm not going to get under 3. Okay, here we go. We didn't get ambushed yet. That's a good start. Okay, if we can get that one out of the way, we've got one of the three fights done. I need to win three fights back to back. If we lose any one of them, we have to start over. Oh boy. Once we get into the last encounter of the last, or the last enemy of the last fight, we're done. Like, then I know that I've won. Not ambushed yet, so that's still good. If we can get rid of these four, we're actually in one of the best shapes I've ever been for this third fight. Doesn't mean a thing, because that fight can still very much troll me, but it helps. Odds have grown. 
yeah, the odds are definitely now increasing for still a decent enough time. Unfortunately, that's an ambush. It's not good. Uh, that means I have one turn to kill three enemies. The Emperor and the two Royal Guards. Because the Wood Golem can't be teleported away. And that has to happen this turn. Because the Wood Golem will kill someone. This is bad. Come on, not like this game. Not like this. That's two? Okay, come on. Get the Royal Guard and we win. If, it, if this hits the Royal Guard, it's done. We win the fight instantly. Yay! Nice. That is... Uh, okay, just to give you guys an idea, I've only had a first try on this fight once. Good night. This is not a fight you ever first try. So, the fact that we first tried it in a marathon, maybe there is some hope. But you did win. Uh, I'm gonna have you fire turn, you attack. Now we still need to kill this thing. That's gonna take like two minutes, but at least we won. Right. So I have to, every turn I have to revive one of my characters, as well as uh, make sure he takes some damage, so it'll, it takes a couple turns for him to go down. Especially if he kills Ricard like that. Ricard, since he's the one with the blood sword, actually deals the most damage by quite a long shot. That's the one I don't want him to kill because that wastes a good amount of turns. Wake up, you dingus. Yeah, your job is not done, Ricard. You still need to kill this boss for me. Again, cool. I mean, I'm still getting damage in, not to say, but every time he kills Ricard, it just slows down the fight. Regardless, this is a near perfect fight. Like, this is as good a, an Emperor 1 as I can hope for, like, ever. There we go. Cool. Emperor one done. Well done. So got off very graciously there. So yeah. Uh, Emperor done? Time, Kappa? <laughs> <laughs> if only. If only. But no. We still that have would three. That be a crazy PB. We still have Emperor two and three to go. I mean, the pace in general isn't terrible, but... Oh well, I guess that's why we still have the setup buffer on Sunday. <laughs> Everybody down! I mean, peace in the world again. It's good stuff. It's reason for a party, right? Good sound. So yeah, that's this soldier. He stumbles in, and apparently the Dark Knight has proclaimed himself the new emperor. Otherwise, I could have said we were done, but that's unfortunately we kind of still have to deal with that. Gosh dang, Dark Knight. So first off, and this is very very important because I have forgotten this once, and that can kill you if you do. 
And that would mean doing that one fight I just did over, and I do not want to do that. Especially on the first, uh, oh first try. talk to this guy so during that uh, during all that that combat that went on when the Dark Knight proclaimed himself the new Emperor Sid actually got injured and he's about to die as well so poor Sid may he rest in peace oh goodness gracious in uh, he teleported he will, however, with his dying wish, he gave, uh, he gave us his airship to help us travel around a bit. Which is going to help us get to the new Emperor. And hopefully put a stop to him. That's good. In your magical foldable canoe. I know, right? Magical foldable canoe is best canoe. Oh yeah, also overworld enemies have, have gotten quite a bit stronger just now. Maybe I should have mentioned that. Overworld enemies become quite a bit stronger. Well, too bad for parents bringing their kids to school. Yeah. That may definitely be an issue. Like the regular, Some of the regular overworld enemies are not even something I can deal with right now. Not with the levels that I have. So yeah, remember that I said we would do one more shopping menu? Yeah, that's about to come up. Oh boy. Everybody is in parallel. Doot doot! <laughs> yeah, like I said. <laughs> wow! And this is why I saved coming out of Fen. Uh... Did I do the Sid scene? I think I did, but I'm gonna check that. Because I think I saved afterwards. Yes. Yes, he's not in the doorway, so we're fine. But yeah, this is... I've had a run where, you know, I had not saved between getting Sid and that. Or rather, uh, like, getting to... Uh, or beating the Emperor 1, I mean, and getting to the airship. Oh, no. And I died in a similar fashion to that. It's not too common because you take very few land tiles. Like, there's only 10 tiles on land you actually have to take. But, yeah, that can happen. Let's just say that wasn't fun. That's pretty bad, yeah. Redo this a little bit real quick. Luckily, everything on the sea here is runnable, so it's not that bad, but I guess I'll save here this time around. So remember how I said we were going to do one more shopping menu? Yes. Yeah, it's about to come up. How would that be? Not as if I've ever run this game here before. Or have I? Dude, that's weird. Do you ever get a feeling of deja vu? Yeah, I think I think I know what you're talking about. So yeah, this is the pandemonium. This is 
the next dungeon we need to go through. So the dungeon itself can be really, really quick because almost everything is runnable here with the exception of one encounter. So as long as we don't get trolled, we can hopefully get through here in, in a matter of minutes and move on to the next dungeon. Because we're going to need that time, I think. Yeah. Uh, actually, that's wrong. I was about to say, that doesn't look correct. I think these skulls were just a rejected tattoo design. Pretty much. stairs down here. That's the one. That looks right. Let's go. Nice preemptive. Oh, that's an interesting thing. Well, uh, that was an interesting <laughs> fight. Uh, don't think I've ever seen him do that before. I'm an idiot, never mind. <laughs> Attacking me and then running away. Oh, okay. I mean, it gave me a nice stat upgrade for my HP on two of my characters. That's good. Okay, let's double check that we don't have the Blood Sword equipped anymore. If we would have had the Blood Sword on him by the end of this dungeon, the run is incomplete. Because you lose it. Yeah, because you lose it. And without, I can't. I just cannot beat the final dungeon. Or final boss, rather. Like, I could get to the final boss, but then I'd be stuck. Oh, this is the one thing that isn't runnable. It's only generals. It's the only encounter we can't run from. The one that, you know, I was hoping not to see so that we could finish up quickly. There's literally just Jade Passage and Pandemonium left after this, by the way. No. And one cutscene still. Okay, we just saved, saved anyway, whatever. Sometimes, sometimes that's the way to go fast with this. Sometimes you gotta go slow to go fast. See, now we passed him. Durger 2060. Yeah, that sounds like a Durger quote, right? <laughs> yeah. Especially with that petrification. That petrification is actually kind of... Oh, right, flying ray. I'm stupid. That's the only other thing that isn't runnable. I always forget about the flying ray. Like, every single run I've ever done, I've forgotten that the flying ray is totally so unrunnable. Alright. Come on. Come on. Not like this. We're so close to the end of this dungeon. There's two more floors after this one, and one of those is a really short one. It's just one hallway. No. Oh. That's better. Because the 
uh, we'll, we'll meet with the uh, Emperor on uh, floor 8. This is floor 6. Come on, teleport away. That's a start. Now the rest of them. Get to floor 7. Get to, find, get to the, the thing. Beat the game. We kind of need to do that. Yeah, that'd be good. Kind of have like four minutes left to do that. That's uh, actually nine. <laughs> According to schedule, anyway. or negative one, but like, I'd rather take the nine. So this is that one hallway floor that I mentioned. That hits hard, I'll say, but... Yeah. Hey, at least we got past them, right? I'd say so. So yeah, that was that floor. I told you it was a quick floor. That was... yeah. That was not worth the pump and circumstance. Yeah, the center room here is literally the last room, and then we're done with this dungeon. That would be two left, nice. which is uh, Jade Passage immediately going into Pandemonium. <laughs> so it should be doable. Kind of expecting one more encounter, judging by the amount of steps. Nice, we got lucky. Okay, Emperor 2. So we're gonna stop uh, our brother from taking over the world. As it turns out the Dark Knight is our brother. Dun dun dun. And then the Emperor rises from hell and literally turns this entire thing into, well, hell. So, you know, this would be really, really bad because he's about to kill us in the process. Not that we just go up to bloodsword him and be done, but, you know. Ricard decides to step in the way, block his path so we can escape. It's like six candles here, that's little help to me. Yeah. better? Yeah. Now I'm happy. forgetting one more thing, which is actually kind of important. There we go. The Jade Passage, the last word that we needed to learn. Nice. Uh, blood Sword, remove that. He's left-handed, so we're giving him the blood sword on the left hand. Okay, let's go. At least we'll be in, in the Jade Passage before the estimate is done. At least according to the schedule. Ah, uh, actually, no. Rip me. Let's hope for a godlike final dungeon, shall we? <laughs> is this the final dungeon? No. Uh, this is the dungeon going into the final dungeon. Right. 
Because, you know, having just the final dungeon wasn't enough. No. This is FF2, please. That would be too easy. So this is the Jade Passage, this is basically the good, as I said, like the dungeon going into the final dungeon. So we're not actually in the final dungeon yet, we're about to get there though. This is that, this is the shorter one of the two from comparing to the one just now. It's two long floors and that's basically it. One of which we're about to start. This is also the floor that we're going to get haste, which is the last spell that we're going to get for this game. Uh, we'll need that on the final boss, on a couple of, uh, you know, just to get that extra bit of uh, agility, so that we can speed up the fight quite a bit. Because getting dealing more hits on a weapon that kills everything in 16 hits is kind of useful. Yeah. If you then up your hit count from 2 to 7, yeah, he'll go down into in two to three turns, depending on the luck. That's kind of what we're going for, though. Yeah. So there we go. That's haste. It's a convenient place to sh set up a shop, by the way. I don't think he'll get a lot of customers there, but that might just be me. Oh, everybody was in front. That could have been bad. Underground in the secret passage where only the queen can let you go. It's a good place for shop, man. Think of all the foot traffic in those uh, yeah, not to tourism. Yeah, not to mention behind the waterfall. It's probably the least obvious part of it, but... He I probably made the waterfall himself. Eh. As an eye catcher. That's, that's fair. People would be staring at the waterfall being like, you know, cool looking waterfall, and then <laughs> they'd see... <laughs> wait, is there somebody behind there? Okay, it's this... I'm gonna buy all his gold needles. It's this floor and then one long floor left. Or uh, one short floor left, I mean. This is the long one. Should get me to the next floor at least. Okay, this is the last floor of the Jade Passage, so we're about to enter the final dungeon. So if we get a really good final dungeon, it might not be too terrible. Still a little bit of time to make up, but... Nice. Every little thing is gonna be alright. Yeah, like I said, we have a setup buffer. Thanks up 20 minutes right there. So yeah, this is the J... or this is the Pandemonium. Or, as it's better known as Hell, uh, this is where we're going to have to fight the, uh, the Emperor again. Also, that was not a reference to how hard this dungeon is. This is the, 
the game t t tells you that it's literal that it literally translates as hell. So that's a thing. Because you know, as if this game wasn't hard enough, they pull you through literal hell. Hooray. Still, just getting Death Riders. Death Riders are like the best possible encounter you can get around here. So, as long as we keep getting those, we might actually be fine. They were pretty good. Go on, the the, the Men Mentis Devil is as good, by the way. Oh, good. Like, I will take that to all the same. Mantis Rider. Okay, first four done. More to go. Yeah, this dungeon is long. Uh, I think two mithril is runnable. Yeah. Yes. There is the mithril golems are a really weird encounter in that uh, you can get one mithril golem and not know what pack it belongs to. If it's the mithril golem with two gotos like enemies, it's not runnable. If it's the Mithril Golem with another Mithril Golem, it is runnable. Something like that. So yeah, this is like a, this is an unrunnable combo. Wow. Even though individually all of them are runnable. <laughs> because, yay. It's a good game. Luckily we had a good stretch here, so it shouldn't be too hard. Well, let's be fair, this was a boss earlier. Luckily, the, like, the Lamia Queen can show up as just the Lamia Queen or with a pack of six other Lamias. This is the best configuration for this encounter. It's not the best encounter, but it's a good configuration for it. You can at least teleport the one away. It's, a, it's literally the one. Come on. Okay, not like this. Get rid of that one Lamia Queen for me, please. Nope. This is not how I intended to lose all my time. You there intended we go. to lose it all to the final boss. Yeah. Or preferably after the final boss. That way it's not my problem anymore. <laughs> um, Kinnan, get yourself ready to set up, by the way because we're going to need to make a very quick switch if we want to make up some time. Right? Sure. I mean, if we're going to have to make up the time somehow, we might as well do it with the five-minute setup buffers. We've done it with less before. <laughs> hmm. I think Rule does not agree with me. Oh, no, we've done it with us. We'll be fine. Okay, so that was the runnable pack. Good stuff. Gets me into the third floor. Just, I've been going at this for a while now. Uh, yeah. I mean, I was here 9 tomorrow morning, and I have not, not done anything since. Perfect. That's the runnable pack. I'm going to skip a bit of this floor, because there is actually a, a useful clip through a wall somewhere. Just a secret passage right there. Uh, I need to kill this. It's one. Come on, Maria, get both of them so we can move on. Two. So even though the curls are runnable by themselves, even, but because there was a Lamia Queen there once, it's not runnable. So yeah, we need to actually get rid of all of them, or it does not count. So if you would please, just go out of my sight so I can finish. That'd be neat. There we go. There we go. Okay, 
see? At least now we only have to crop the game real quick and move on after this run. Okay, that's floor three done. See? At least that was a quick floor. We're on floor six. But also not really. Uh, fire is runnable. See, so yeah, that combination of enemies is actually only unrunnable if I believe it's with a Thunder Gigas. Fire and Ice are fine. I'd happily see those. Just not Thunder. See, now they're by themselves, so now I can run. No big deal. We got this. They need your friends to watch out better. Oh boy. Let's go. Second half of floor four. Jeez. That was floor six we just did, by the way. We're done with six. And I think we don't even go to five at any point, so... Please be of the runnable kind. Yes, nice. It's always nice to see when you get the Mithril Golem, and it's the runnable one. This is actually a, a pretty good final dungeon so far. Oh, I got control too much. That is not gonna happen. And that's not something I'll kill. What? Oh, sorry. I think Rule is getting really, really tired. And I think so that I am too. And then I'm the one running even, which is easier. Good, but... good. See, floor seven. We skipped Hooray. five. We skipped uh, the remainder of six. It's like floor 13. Yeah, floor five we never actually go to. Nothing of use there. Uh, since it's an ambush, we'll reset. There's a lot of runnable stuff on this floor, so... I'll take a risk in trying to go a little bit faster. See? Lots of runnable stuff. That probably was worth it. Those guys did look like the discount monsters, though. Yeah, pretty much, but hey. I mean, if you're part of literal hell... Eh? Yeah, you'll probably take everything. What? Morning. Oh boy. Ah. Uh, fun stuff happened during night. Like what? <laughs> well, you can see what I'm running, right? Uh, we did. Al we already finished Evil Land any percent. I PB'd by uh, about 20 seconds. Uh, Pokemon Crystal crashed. The GameCube crashed halfway through the run. So yeah, we uh, we're uh, we've completely redone everything. We're uh, about behind uh, by as much as I'm behind my or over th the three hour mark. So we're a good bit behind on schedule now, but within some reason. Good and bad. Ah, uh, Kinnon. Ah, uh, Blue Dragon. Dude, I know that. Come on. It's three more floors and I'm, I'm done. If we don't get a terrible final boss fight, we should be like, 320, hopefully, maybe a bit less even. I said with anything but Thunder Gigas. <laughs> Thunder is the one that's unrunnable. Thunder! Thunder. 
That's better. Ice Lizard, Devil Wolf, that works for me. Fire, that's more like it. Okay, before last floor, guys. Uh, Kinnon, you may want to get ready on time. Or, you know, whomever. It'll take like an hour more. Because we are on the last floor, but yeah, it is it is FF2. Anything can still happen. Not gonna lie. Uh, actually, what the hell? No. Not a King Behemoth. Let's not do King Behemoths today. Yeah, I'd rather take the blue dragon. That's good. Come on, if you get teleported away first turn, nice. Now we just need a godlike final boss fight, which has never happened at a BSG before, so. Let's go. Let's do it. Yes. Like an hour yeah. and a half into the run. An hour and a half in. So... It's probably the cartridge. It's probably the crystal cartridge. Yeah, I don't know. It's hard to say, but... Uh, haste... There's a blink... Okay, get ready on time. Let's hope he doesn't troll for once. That's fine. That is completely fine. Um, don't kill him, please. Okay, still fine. We need 12 more hits to kill. Eight more. Uh... He should live, I think. I need a crit. I think he lives that, right? Yeah. Okay. Nice. I think I had... Don't know if that'll do it. But hopefully the Bacchus's wine will help here. Or actually, that's Berserk. Oh my goodness. Nice. <sighs> FF2, buddy. Yeah, this is FF2, not FF4. Okay. <laughs> and it decides it's not done with you 17 times in a row. Yeah, if we're going at 325, I'm cutting it, regardless. Because at that point, we'd be so far over that, you know, let's not. Well, we've seen the final boss. Let's be fair. Yeah. We're already far enough behind schedule as is. Okay, that's eight hits. I need nice. eight more to win. That's fine. That's perfect. Okay, get ready on time. Not yet, that's four more. Should be fine. It's time. There we go. Okay, uh, we're quickly gonna move on to Kirby because we are very far behind, but uh, 